Okay, so I think on Monday, um, I introduced this problem, this, this idea here, and the idea is that we want to decipher a coded message. And so let's say we've intercepted this text here, and every letter in here has been sub it's you know it's it's been created with a substitution cipher okay so each letter in the alphabet was substituted by another letter and we want to figure out what the original text is okay and you know on monday we talked about how to evaluate a potential cipher mapping and all of this and so here is you know kind of let's say this is one potential cipher mapping and so if we assume this, this mapping was the correct mapping that, you know, A became H and B became T and C became N and so on and so forth, then, then the original text must have been this, okay? If, if this were the original text and we applied this mapping, then we would get the text message that we in intercepted. So K becomes Z and B, here became a T and the D became an R and the K, um, K became a Z and uh, the E became a Y, okay? And so, so do you think this was the original text message that the people were trying to pass to each other? Probably not because this doesn't look anything like what a human might say to another human, right? So this is not, this doesn't make sense, right? But, but this, this would have been the original text if this mapping were correct, but that would kind of indicate to us that, oh, all right, this mapping is not correct because this doesn't really make sense to be the original text, okay? And, and we're gonna kind of evaluate the probability of the mapping using Bayes' rule, okay? And basically um, we said that the probability of this being the correct cipher key mapping, given whatever text we have, is going to be proportional to basically the probability of this text or the likelihood of the text. Okay, because using Bayes' rule, um, the posterior probability is equal to the likelihood multiplied by the prior divided by the marginal. And we said the prior probability is going to be constant. There's no kind of reason why we should believe one letter mapping to be more likely than another letter mapping. So all kind of prior to looking at the data, all letter mappings are kind of equally probable. So the prior probability is, is a constant. That marginal probability is just the sum of the numerator acro evaluated across all possible, um, I guess all possible mappings. And so that's also a constant. So, you know, we, we have a constant multiplied by the likelihood. So that means the posterior probability, which is what we're looking for, is gonna be proportional to the likelihood. Okay, and so um, on Monday, we talked about how we're going to evaluate the, the likelihood of the text, okay? And we're gonna evaluate the likelihood of the text using, uh, as a combination of two different likelihoods. One is the likelihood of two letter combinations found in whatever this quote unquote original text was, right? So if this were the original text, and we applied this mapping, then we would have gotten the kind of encoded message. So uh, we would ask something like, how likely is this combination KB? How likely is this combination BD and DK and KE and E space and space O and OQ and QF and things like that? And, you know, um, There's uh, there, there might be a few words that have KB in, in them. So I think like, I don't know, is, is black box a single word or two words? I think, I think black box could be one word. But anyway, th you would have a KB in there. But it's not like that common of a, of a letter combination, okay? We don't want, we're, it's, not, it's not zero, but it's, it's not super common, right? Um, and, and things like that, okay? And, and to do this, we're, we use the, to estimate these letter probabilities, these two letter combinations, we looked at the English translation of War and Peace, and we went through all kind of 60 whatever thousand lines of text, uh, backbone, that's a good word, okay? Um, uh, two letter combinations that, um, 
and, and we kind of tallied them up and, and we kept track of all of them. And, you know, I showed you kind of your little cool little phone trick where you can type, you know, try to hit the spot between the letters and, you know, the your on-screen keyboard, you know, changes the areas that get mapped to letters based basically based on these two letter combinations and stuff. Um, and so, so that's going to be one way to evaluate the uh, the likelihood of the text. We're going to say, okay, well, how likely is it to get you know these kinds of things? And some of these we're going to say, like, yeah, the fact that we see Q B next to each other like this, and uh, you know, letter combinations like Q S and Q Y, like <laughs> we're seeing what just way too many Qs. Um, this is this is a, a sign that this is not a good a good um, mapping here. Okay. And then we're also gonna look up for the uh, like likelihood of any real words that we find in the original text. So we go through here and we say, okay, did any real words appear? And I see the word okay. And um, GE, GE is not really um, like super common, but, but it appears in what we, ha what we have, which is this lexical database, which kind of it was compiled from the Wiktionary and some other sources, and it kind of has a whole bunch of words and, um, and kind of has some kind of probability uh, associated with them, okay? And so um, we're gonna go through and we're gonna look for any kind of words that appear, and, um, and the words that appear, we'll, we'll put in the probabilities there. And then if we see non-words, okay, like this, this is not a word, um, we're going to just assign it a very low probability. We don't want to ever use zero probabilities because if you put in a zero probability, then the probability becomes zero and, um, and that just kind of breaks everything. So, I mean, while extremely unlikely, it is possible that the person sending the original message did want to send like maybe like a password or something and then said, you know, the password you need to enter into the computer is GJJGRWBS or something like that. So th there's a possibility that this was the, that this is the original intended message. Probably very unlikely, but, um, but we don't wanna eliminate it and say it's a zero probability. So we're gonna just give it a very low probability and, and, and you can kind of select what value you want to be low, do you want it like to be 10 to the negative 10? Do you want it to be 10 to the negative 12 or something like that? You can change what, what exactly a low probability is here, okay? So, so we're gonna kind of combine these two log likelihoods and because they're log likelihoods, we just add them together rather than multiply them together. And so the probability of our text given the cipher key mapping is gonna be the log likelihood of the two letter combos plus some kind of scaling factor multiplied by the log likelihood of the words that appear in the thing, okay? And, uh, and the scale is uh, another parameter you can choose. Uh, and, you know, you can choose um, a big value, which is gonna favor the log likelihood of the words, or you can shrink that scale to something very small, and that's gonna favor the two letter combos, okay? Um, this scale parameter is always gonna kind of be <laughs> small anyway, like on the order of like, somewhere around 7%, 10%, 12%, something around there, just because um, the, as far as the words go, we have around 80,000 words. And, um, and so the probability of kind of any one of these words itself is, is pretty low. Whereas as far as the letter combinations go, we're looking at the 26 letters plus a space. So we have 27 by 27. And so there's, you know, really only 729 combos. And so, you know, any one of these probabilities, even like the least common letter combinations are not super uncommon. So anyway, all to say the scale value in general will, will probably be something around 10%, you know, plus or minus a few percentage points here. Okay. So this is a little bit of a recap of what we covered on Monday. And I just kind of want to make sure this all makes sense and is okay before I move on here. So um, um, I guess let me give you your first two quiz answers for today. First two quiz answers are D and E, dog and elephant, dog and elephant for the first two quiz answers, D and E.
All right, so we have a way to kind of evaluate the, the text that, you know, we say, what was the probability that this was the original text message that was being sent? And we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna evaluate that best based on the two letter combos and any kind of words that we see, okay? So how do we go about searching for the correct mapping, okay? And, and the problem is, is that there's just so many possible cipher key mappings. There's 26 factorial, which is on the order of four times 10 to the 26, just this absurdly huge number of um, cipher key mappings, right? And so it'd just be, um, it would be super inefficient to just try to simply try a random mapping and evaluate its likelihood, right? Because the probability of hitting a good mapping by random chance is gonna be very, very, very low, okay? And just, just to kind of illustrate this, I said, you know, here's three random mappings. So here's the, the first one. And, uh, and if this were the original mapping, or if this were the correct mapping, then the original text would have been this. Um, I, I tried this one. And if this, were the if this were the correct mapping, then that means the original text would have been this. And if this were the correct mapping, then the original text must have been this, okay? And, and this is just, it's all just garbage, right? It's, it's um, th this doesn't look like anything, okay? This is also complete garbage. Um, you know, it's true. If this were the original text, you know, K would become a Z and F becomes T and P becomes R and, you know, and it would produce this coded message. But, you know, what's the likelihood, what's the likelihood that this was the original message? And it seems, it just seems terrible. Okay. So, um, so we don't, <laughs> We're not going to accept any of these things, okay? So how are we supposed to find a good mapping? All right, and so we're going to use the Metropolis algorithm, okay? And so you know we've been talking about the Metropolis algorithm, and you, you did the Metropolis algorithm on you know your midterm exam and in your homework that you're going to turn in today, um, and uh. And it feels like this is very different because so far all of our applications of the Metropolis algorithm have been things like generate values from the normal distribution or generate values from you know some distribution, which you know is is a useful application, but frankly is isn't super exciting just because we already have tools that are able to generate values from the normal distribution. So, but we can use the Metropolis algorithm in a situation like this, which seems so strange, but it's actually going to work out quite well, OK? So rather than just arbitrarily saying, all right, just shuffle up the letters and just try out an entirely new random mapping, and let's see if it's any good, OK? This is, that's not going to be an effective strategy. What we're going to do is we're going to take whatever mapping we have right now, and then we're going to create another mapping based on it, OK? We're going to say, OK. All right, I will admit this mapping is absolutely terrible. This mapping is absolutely terrible, okay? But rather than starting fresh, okay, let's just take our terrible mapping and let's just see if we can improve it a tiny bit, okay? And so uh, we're going we're gonna to take our current mapping and we're going to just swap two letters. And we're going to just say, you know, if I swap two letters, will it give me something a little bit better? And if it does, we'll consider that a win, okay? So, so here's our current um, our current coded text, and we're going to say, well, what if this is our current mapping, or if this is the if this mapping is correct, then the original text would have been this, okay? And we we look at this and we go, okay, K B D K E O Q F A K D O Q F D G C K G E B G D D G C K D O Q D. You know, you you can't you can't read this, okay? But and. And if I plug this into kind of my uh, log probability function, which looks at the two letter combinations and sees if there's any words, it says the log probability is negative 1,807. So we have this very, very, very small value that when we take the log of it, we get a very negative value. Okay, so we have a value close to zero, not, not quite zero. Zero would be negative infinity if we take the log. But we have this very low probability. And when we take the log of it, we get negative 1,807. So I'm going to say, what if we swapped the B and the E, OK? That G, instead of mapping to B, what if G gets mapped to E? 
and O gets mapped to B. Okay, so if we did that, then the original text looks very similar to this, okay, except um, just this swap, okay, because um, we're looking at what what letter got mapped to B, okay, it used to be the letter G got mapped to B, but now we're saying the letter O gets mapped to B. So every time we see a B in this text here, we're going to have an O, all right? And so, so this is, it's still garbage, but it's less bad garbage, okay? The, this garbage is a little bit better than the other garbage, okay? And because and when we look at it, we say, okay, KBDKE, that's, that's no good. GQFAKD, no good. GQF, no good. But now we have do, do. That looks like a real word, okay? And we have bod, b o d, and d do. And over here, um, you know, this is not a real word, but it's got the structure of a real word. You know, bow cake. That's not a real word, but you know, we could imagine a, another English word that's kind of similar, where it, you kind of have this pattern of consonants and vowels, right? Because because that's kind of how we. Like we know this is couldn't be a real word because we just have a whole bunch of consonants together, right? And I, I mean, I, I suppose we've seen some last names where there's like a whole bunch of consonants together, and and we just don't know how to pronounce these things. But you know, in in English, we we're expecting kind of a pattern of like a few consonants, a vowel, a few consonants, and a couple vowels or things like that. So this, you know, not a real word, but it kind of looks like it could be something. So we'd say this this again still trash but it's an improvement over this trash, okay? And so, you know, and when we plug this into kind of the, the function that calculates the log probability, we get a less negative value, right? So here, the, our probability is negative 1,807. And here, I have an improvement, negative 1,788, okay? So it's, it's less, the probability is, is better, okay? And, and so the Metropolis algorithm when it proposes something and the probability of the proposed thing is better than the probability of the current thing, we're going to accept it. That's, that's the Metropolis algorithm. So, so we're going to, um, the probability, you know, the log probability is less negative, which means the original probability is, is greater than this probability. And so um, we have the probability of the proposed mapping um, is greater than the probability of the Kind of the current mapping, so we're gonna we're gonna accept it. We're gonna accept it according to the Metropolis algorithm here. All right, is that all right? How the kind of the uh, the application here of the Metropolis algorithm, and so this is this is how we're gonna operate. We're gonna rather than just starting completely, we're gonna just say rather than saying this is totally bad and let's just start completely new, we're gonna say all right, it's bad, but can we just make one change that's a little bit better? Okay, and that, that's actually a good philosophy in life is just say, let's see if we can make one change that's a little bit better. And, and, and we say, all right, here's a change. It's a little bit better, okay? And then we're gonna just try this again. Can we make another change that's a little bit better? Can we make another change that's a little bit better? And, um, and because it's the Metropolis algorithm, we're not gonna require that every single change that we do has to always be better, okay? So we can still accept changes that perhaps weren't as good, okay? So um, if we try out a new swapping and it says, oh, well, it's not as good, we'll still accept those, but just not always. And we accept them with the probability of, probability of the proposed divided by probability of the current, okay? So that's still the Metropolis algorithm where uh, we accept things that result in lower probabilities, just not with a probability of one, but according to this kind of ratio that I'm hoping looks familiar by now, okay? Um, a computational consideration is that we're gonna be dealing with really, really, really tiny probabilities, okay? Um, values that are close to zero. And so you can run into kind of machine epsilon problems, right? So on the computer, we're not able to represent like really tiny values very well. And so um, instead of doing a, a random uniform value being less than the P proposed divided by P current, we're going to apply the log to everything, and we're going to get. Um, we're going to ask if the log is less than um, the difference between logs. Okay, so um, you know when you have a fraction, 
this it becomes a difference, right? So log of p proposed minus log of p current. And, uh, and we're going to take the log of some uniform value and we're going to ask, is this less than whatever this difference is? Right. Is that OK? All right, and so we're going to um, run the Metropolis algorithm. And, um, and so I wrote a, a little bit of the stuff about this. I said the Metropolis algorithm is great because we build off of previous states. If we did just, if we just wipe the slate clean every single time, we would have like a one in 26 chance, 26 factorial chance of ever hitting the correct mapping by random chance. Um, so instead we take our current mapping, we propose swapping two letters. If this letter swap results in a better map, the Metropolis algorithm accepts it with probability 100%. And if the letter swap results in a lower probability, the Metropolis algorithm might accept it with basically this probability, p proposed over p current. And, and that just means the Metropolis algorithm will naturally move towards areas of higher probability, even if you start off at a terrible starting location. And I think you guys saw this in your homework, because I think one of the homework problems was use the Metropolis algorithm to produce values from the normal distribution centered at 15, but we intentionally started off at 100, which we know is a terrible location, but the Metropolis algorithm kind of just kind of proposes values and it just generally moves towards that region where you have higher probability, okay? It's just here, we're not dealing on just the one number line. We're dealing in this weird, um, high dimensional hyperspace, right? 26 dimensional hyperspace where the letters get mapped to other letters. And, you know, I, I don't even know how to picture this numeric, like it can't be pictured numerically, but it's, it's just this kind of this weird high dimensional hyperspace where some letter mappings have very low probabilities and other letter mappings have higher probabilities. And, you know, we have this kind of this proposal thing where basically given enough time, it's possible to kind of propose every single possible letter mapping, even just by sw swapping two letters where it's always kind of possible to propose it, you know, any inner letter mapping. And, you know, that, that makes the chain kind of ergodic and, and eventually we're going to reach kind of a, an area of higher probability, right? So in, in the same way that the Metropolis algorithm was able to start at 100 and end up at the normal distribution centered at 15, we can start this off at a terrible location because we have no idea where to even begin. And it will just naturally gravitate towards areas with higher probability, okay? Now, one thing to keep in mind is that our deciphering problem is more of an optimization problem, right? We wanna find the letter mapping that's gonna kind of maximize the probability of the original text and if you think about the purpose of the Metropolis algorithm, it's it's to produce samples, random samples from some distribution, okay? Here, we can still use the Metropolis algorithm. Our goal isn't really to produce random samples from the distribution, but our goal is to get to an area of higher probability, okay? And, and the Metropolis algorithm, because of the way it's set up, is when, you know, when we say sample values from a random distribution, it's generally naturally going to try to sample values that have high probability. And, and the Metropolis algorithm, you know, you can start off in a terrible location and it's just going to kind of gravitate and move towards um, areas with higher probabilities. Okay. So it's not an optimization algorithm, but it does have the effect of finding regions of high probability. So, so that's going to be kind of a neat thing that we can do with the Metropolis algorithm. Now, when we run the algorithm, sometimes the chain will get stuck in kind of a local max area where the current mapping is producing kind of just garbage gibberish, but any kind of letter, two letter swapped um, proposals just produce um, even worse letter mappings. And so it doesn't want to kind of accept those, right? I mean, it might eventually accept it, but it can get kind of stuck in these, these, these regions. And so if that happens, you might need to restart the chain with a different random seed. All right, so conceptually, does this make sense as far as what, what we're gonna try to do um, and, and how the Metropolis algorithm will work? Okay, so I have, um, I've written up a bunch of code and, um, and I, you know, well, this code, I can't take credit for it because, uh, 
I mean, I, I did a lot of it to kind of modify and, and improve the work, but it, you know, a lot of the ideas were based off of um, other things, and um, I can I can put those things. But but uh, I posted this on CCLE, so under um, under week seven, there's a few files. There's the uh, the R script that I've created. Um, there's the uh, War and Peace text file that that we use to create kind of our two letter. Um, transition probability matrix, okay? And then here's just uh, two uh, R data files. One's the transition probability matrix based on worn piece. And the other is kind of this lexical database. And that, that's based off of, there's a textbook called Machine Learning for Hackers that um, ha came with this file. And then um, I also went to uh, Wikipedia or actually, actually the Wiktionary, okay? I guess they're, they're the dictionary version of Wikipedia, and um, and it kind of has this word frequency list where um, it kind of gives you the word and basically the count. And I'm not exactly sure where it, what its source is, but um, but it's got you know the shows up this many times of and to in I that was he his he it with is these are kind of the most frequent words and um, and here it lists off the. Um, they have these frequency lists for, I think the first, I don't know, 40,000 or so words or something, but anyway, okay. Um, so I'm gonna put in this function decode, okay? And this is gonna be kind of allowing us to go from our kind of ciphered text, apply some kind of text mapping to kind of get back what, what the original text would have been if we, um, if we applied the uh, the cipher mapping, okay. So, uh, so this is just straight from the um, the uh, kind of the lecture notes here. So here's our original text: Z T R Z Y E K X H Z R E K X R B N Z B Y T B R, and then if we apply this, um, the mapping is H T N R Y X B. H T N R Y X B. Um, if we applied that, okay, um, then the original text that would have produced this code will be this, right? And this function works by basically taking kind of the coded text and it's saying basically, all right, split it down into letters. It just substrings it basically one letter at a time. And then it takes that letter and it looks up in the mapping and it says, all right, which, which letter corresponded to this mapping? And it says, okay, well, this is, this is what you would have gotten, okay? Um, I think I ran this part already on Monday where I went through the entire text of War and Peace and I looked at every two letter combination. And basically what it does is it goes through each kind of line and it just, it finds uh, the two letter combination. It says, you know, which row is the last letter, which column is the current letter. And it will add one every time it sees something and it, and it basically tallies that up, okay? And, and it takes a little while to kind of go through all of the um, entire text, but I saved it into this data file. So I can just kind of load the data file. And so if we, um, uh, look at the, sorry, so if, if I look at the transition matrix, oh shoot, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so we look at the transition matrix, it's a 27 by 27 matrix, and it says, um, you know, A followed by A showed up seven times, B followed by A showed up 3,189 times. I think we asked, you know, how many times do we see K followed by B? K followed by B showed up seven times. Um, and, you know, a bunch of these things didn't show up at all. Q followed by A showed up zero times. Q followed by B showed up zero times. Um, so we pretty much have all zeros here. Um, although we did, we have 2,329 instances of Q followed by U. Okay. Um, and anyway, so this goes through. We don't want to have zeros because again, zeros create problems where we just have, um, it's gonna uh, have nothing. So what we've done is I've added one to every single square and then, um, and then I'm gonna turn everything into a probability by taking each thing and dividing by the sum, okay? 
And so the resulting transition probability matrix um, has, has a bunch of these things. And so this row for Q um, has very low probabilities pretty much everywhere, three times, two times 10 to the negative seven, with the exception of this, this would be the column for U. So QU shows up with 7.49 times 10 to the negative four, but pretty much everything else has a very low probability, not zero. Again, we don't we don't want to have issues with zero, um, and so these are all instances where um, um, just kind of showing the probability of each of these two letter two letter things. Okay, and I think uh, we plotted this, and so this is kind of the result. And we see all right, T followed by H is common, H followed by E, and I followed by N, A followed by N, E followed by N, E followed by R. E followed by D. Um, these are kind of the most common combinations. N followed by N followed by D, N followed by G. Those are also common letter combos. Okay, and so um, so we have a function that will go through. This is the two-letter log probability, and it's going to take some kind of text, two-letter log probability, and and we can say, okay, well, how common is, uh, and it uses all caps. So if you say, all right, what's the log probability of getting some word like T-H-E, all right? So it's going to look at T-H, or first space T, followed by T-H, followed by H-E, followed by E space, okay? So it's going to kind of look at those uh, letter combinations and add it up, and we get a value like negative 14, okay? Whereas if you give it something like, three letters like QXJ, which is very improbable as far as letter combination goes, it gives it a much lower log probability of negative 50 or something like that, okay? And then, you know, something not as common as THE, but like ING, you know, is a, is a little bit lower. ING is, is a common letter combination. It's less, uh, you know, but not as common as THE. And, you know, you can, you can, uh, put in other things, you know, um, PRI or something like that. Okay. And, and in, so you can kind of evaluate, right. But if you put in PRQ, that becomes much more negative and stuff like that. Okay. So this will kind of evaluate just the two letter combos and, and stuff of, of your data here, the likelihood. Um, I, we also have this lexical database. Okay. So if I, just do head like this, and we'll look at like maybe the first hundred rows, and then we do as .data. Okay, so so here's kind of the first um, hundred rows, and it says you know the word A shows up with this probability, and then AA and triple A and stuff. Uh, Ardvark shows up probability six times ten to the negative seven. Ardwolf one times ten to the negative seven. Arga? I don't know. Okay. So anyway, um, and it, and it got a whole bunch of these things, right? So it's got abandon one times ten to the negative five, abandonable. So that's a word, just not as common. Times ten to the negative nine. Okay. Abandoned, abandonedly, abandoner, abandoning, abandonment, abandonments, abandons, and things like that. And and basically, all of these different words have different kind of probabilities, right? Uh, we've got abbreviate, abbreviated, abbreviates, abbreviating, abbreviation, abbreviations, abbreviator, abbreviators, abbreviature. I don't even know what that word is. Abbreviature. Huh. Okay. But anyway, so, and all of these things have just kind of different probabilities. And so this lexical database has around 92,000 entries and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's this big, big thing. And what we're going to do is, um, you know, we, we apply it so this one gram probability is basically going to take take the word, the lexical database, and it's going to look up the word inside the lexical database, and and if it can't find it, right? So it, here it says row which word equals this, and basically if there's no match, row is going to have um, length zero, and if that's the case, it's going to just it doesn't return zero, it's going to return a very small value, and here I've chosen one times ten to the negative ten, but you can. You can tune this to be some other value if you want it. 10 to the negative 11, 10 to the negative 8, some, some other value you can choose 
choose something here, okay? Um, I, I probably want to choose 10 to the negative 8 because you have real words that have values that are um, smaller than 10 to the negative 8, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, this is a tunable parameter, okay? Um, otherwise, return whatever value it finds inside the, uh, the table here. Okay, so that's going to be one gram probability. And then uh, log prob words is going to take the text and it's going to kind of split up. Um, so if I do um, one gram probability, I can give it a word like the, and it um, lexical database. Okay, so you know here's the probability of the word the. Here's the probability of the word um, statistic. Okay. But if I give it some just nonsense words, okay, it gives me um, one times 10 to the negative 10, okay? Um, and then what log prob words will do, log prob words will take a sentence like the house, oops, specify lexical database, okay? And it, and it will kind of go through and take some of the probabilities of these kind of words. So, you know, the house is going to be, you know, which is more common, the house or the mouse, okay? The house is more common than the mouse uh, versus the louse, okay? The louse is even less, less common. And, and if I give it um, some, some word that doesn't exist, then it gets even more negative, right? So, so it, it kind of looks at these things and it just, and if it can find the word, it's going to look it up and, and it's going to also kind of the number it gives back will be dependent on kind of the probability of each of these words. Okay. All right. And so uh, let me just kind of just want to make sure my script is going to work fine here. All right. So, um, so here I'm going to just start off with some kind of sample mapping. So this is kind of my um, just some random mapping. We just start off arbitrarily out here, okay? And if this were the correct mapping, then the decoded text, the original text would have been this. This is not very good, okay? And we're going to calculate the, uh, the log probability based on the two-letter transitions. And then we're going to calculate the log probability based on the words that appear. And we're going to kind of combine these, these things, okay? Uh, and we're going to combine them using the weight here, okay? And so I've got the current two-letter probability plus the weight of kind of the word probabilities. And so my current combined likelihood is around negative 1780 or so. Okay. And right now this is, we're going to set it as kind of the best that we've seen so far. This is the only one we've seen so far. And I've got, uh, I'm going to just let it run for, I guess, up to 1500 iterations. And this is basically the uh, going to be the Metropolis algorithm here, right? We're going to propose is going to take two letters, one through 26, and we're going to just randomly select two of them. We're going to propose swapping these two, okay? So we're going to take our current mapping. We're going to set this to be our proposed mapping. And in the proposed mapping, we're going to swap these two letters, okay? So we're going to just swap the two letters in the proposed mapping. And then I'm going to take the proposed mapping, and I'm going to apply it and see uh, to the coded text. And we're going to see, well, what would that decoded text look like, right? So basically, we're saying, all right, here is, um, here's my current mapping. And this is what the decoded text would have looked like. Uh, and if here's the proposed mapping, and what would it look like there? And we're going to kind of compare. We're going to have it calculate the log probability of the proposed text based on the two letter probabilities and the word probabilities. And we're going to combine those together into the combined likelihood log likelihood. And then, um, and this part's the Metropolis algorithm, right? So uh, like I said, instead of using um, u being less than the ratio, we're, because this could run into machine epsilon problems, we're going to use the log probabilities. So we're going to say if log of one random uniform value is less than the difference between the log likelihoods of the proposed minus the current log likelihood, if, if that's the case, we're going to accept it, right? And we're going to accept the proposed mapping, the proposed mapping will become the mapping and the proposed current decoded text will become the current decoded text and the proposed likelihood will become the current likelihood. Okay. And, 
and that's basically it. And, and if we don't accept it, then we're not actually trying to produce a random sample. So I'm not going to bother trying to like save the current mapping into like a, a sample that I'm going to have. So I'm not bothering this. I'm just trying to find like better ones here. Okay. Um, if the one that we did turns out to be the best, I'm going to kind of just update it to say like the best decoding that I've encountered so far is, uh, you know, what I've encountered here. And then we're going to just kind of output whatever our decoded text is onto the screen. All right, so I hope this works. And uh, and are you guys able to see the screen okay and read uh, read the text on here? Okay, because you're going to see a bunch of text kind of zip by here because it's going to just print out the current decoding, propose a map, and if that map is accepted, it's going to accept it, and, and you'll just see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. Okay, here we go. All right, so it's just proposing a bunch of uh, letter swappings, and um, and I'm curious if you guys can figure out what the original text is. So every, you know, it's we've got eaten hog wet hog tea be in lit lat to ta be thought f's the pissed for cheap and tubes. You know, it's it's all gibberish and nonsense. But, but now, you know, at least, <laughs> you know, we started off with total nonsense. And at least this stuff has the structure that looks kind of like it could be English words, right? You know, it's, it's not, it's still nonsense, okay? We have Ayrton had what had to be on rot to be vaps the fiest poor weven tips rob when, <laughs> okay? But at least this stuff looks like, you know, these aren't real words. We have anos, simon, and stuff like that, you know, the, but, but it starts to look kind of like, like English. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious if anybody has figured out what the original text is. I don't know, is this exciting? Maybe, I think it's exciting. Let's let, we'll, we'll let it keep, it, it's slowing down because it's it's entering a region where a lot of the proposed swappings aren't much better. And so the proposed swappings are, are getting rejected. So now we have enter, enter, hey set, hey, ham, enter, ham, ham set, ham to P or not to P, that is the question, whether it is Nopler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to tave arms against a sea of truples and pie opposing anthem. I think by now it, it's probably familiar, right? We haven't gotten it quite right. Oh, I think we've got pretty good now. Enter Hamlet, Ham, Hamlet speaking. To be or not to be, that is the question, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to, it should say, to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Yeah, to be or not to be, that is the question. It's Shakespeare, yes, exactly, Hamlet. This is, it's definitely Hamlet. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so our algorithm was a success. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and let it stop here. But um, here we go. Enter Hamlet to be or not to be, that is the question, whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to, well, it's got tastes rather than take arms against to see a troubles and by opposing in them. So this is, you know, Hamlet's famous soliloquy where, um, you know, He's debating whether he should kill his uncle for murdering his dad. I don't know, I'm, I'm not giving anything away here, right? Like you guys already know. <laughs> so um, so his, his uncle murdered his father and now Hamlet is debating whether to, to kill, take, take vengeance and kill his uncle. And, and he's just saying life sucks, you know, and he's contemplating death and suicide and whether it's to, to be or not to be, you know, whether it's better to be alive. And he talks about sleep and, and the unknown frontier and stuff. So anyway, um, if you've forgotten Hamlet, you should uh, at 
at least uh, <laughs> watch a movie. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I thought this was so cool. I don't think <laughs> it's uh, that, you know, we started off total nonsense, right? And all we did was we just said, hey, you know, rather than just start fresh, rather than just give up, we have this total trash thing, rather than just give up and start fresh every single time, can we just make a small improvement, okay? And, um, and we just propose swapping two letters at a time. And, and each time we're hoping to make a little bit of progress. And, you know, within uh, 50 iterations, we have something, you know, again, this is not, not, not great, but it's, uh, but it's a lot better. And then after around 200 or so iterations, we, we actually get to it. Now, some of these things take longer to, um, to get to the, uh, to the end that we're looking for. Uh, sometimes, again, you can get stuck. You can get stuck in a region where, like a local max, and you have to just start with a new seed and things like that. Um, yeah, it, it feels a little bit like magic, but, um, but I hope this at least gives you a sense of how it's working. So it's not totally just like this mysterious thing, but it's like it's a real application of kind of these algorithms that we've been, been dealing with and just kind of in a context that maybe you not, might not have thought of because so far all of our examples have been just generating random values from like the normal distribution, which, you know, is great, but I, I think this is pretty neat. Um, okay, that's all I've got for you guys today. Let me give you your last um, quiz answer. Last quiz answer is A, A as an apple. A as an apple and um, and yeah, uh, you can try playing around with it. The code is um, up on CCLE. You'll you'll need um, definitely need the, uh, the lexical database and uh, and the transition matrix, which you can either create yourself from the War and Peace text, or you can um, uh, or you can just load up the the one that I, that I've created here. Okay, we'll uh, we'll end here. Um, have a good weekend, you guys, and uh, we'll see you guys on Monday. <laughs>